Hello and welcome to Scottish Gas Moneyfield for the finals of the Boys Schools Cup 2023. We had 12 schools today competing across seven different finals, four of them which we'll take a look at a little bit more depth later on. But first, here's a recap of our bowl and plate games that took place inside Hive Stadium. Dunbar Grammar School lifted the under-16 schools plate in a convincing 50-0 win over Lowenden Hillsborough. The victors started the match strongly and were ruthless in their finishing. I don't know, really, um, I'm really pleased with not just myself, my performance, but um, the team's performance was amazing. Um, I think um, the like, evolution of what we've come on from uh, the start of the year has been, um, it's been great to watch them kind of um, get better and better throughout the matches. Um, and I'm just excited for what's, what's next, yeah. Um, a bit of shell shock, really, if that was, we started so well and we were, we were 17 nil up in the first 10 minutes and we just kind of kicked on through there. The the team were outstanding, the hands were probably the best we've seen this season. I don't know, the, the pitch makes a massive difference up at the high, so it's uh, absolutely brilliant to be to be to watching the fruits of our training coming to, come to uh, fruition at the, at the right time. After a tight first half in the under-16 schools bowl, it was Lindsay Academy who came away with the win as they beat Queen Victoria School by 32 points to 17. No, it was a brilliant game, good conditions, pretty sunny, nice and warm, but the boys played well, a couple of sloppy plays, but overall the boys played well as a team. It was a brilliant game, um, that's probably the, the hardest game we've played all season, that's the best opposition we've came up against, um, and they were really, really, really good players, centre is a great player, they're 9 and 10, were really, really good, um, and they gave us a lot of challenges, um, I think we matched them well, we matched them well, obviously, scoreline came out in our favour, but... Um, it was just a great game to watch, a great game to be involved with. And a dominant first half performance from Musselburgh Youth Rugby saw them lift the under-18 schools bowl over Dalkeith RFC. Uh, yeah, just a bit of complacency really, uh, nothing too bad, we managed to hold out in the end and ended up winning and we played well. You know, the guys came into the game today and it was about winning, whether that would be one point or, you know, what was it, 19 points, you know, it doesn't matter, it was about trying to win the game, but from a com coaching perspective and trying to develop the boys and the team, you know, these are the things that we need to be, uh, you know, a little bit critical on, uh, you know, when we're moving forward. So congratulations there to our winners, Dunbar Grammar School, Queen Victoria School and Musselburgh Youth Rugby. If you want to look at the highlights from those games in full, you can now view them on scottishrugby.org alongside our match reports. But now we're going to take a look at our Shield games. First off, it was the under-16 school Shield which kicked off the whole day between Hutchins Grammar and Fetty's College back in Hive Stadium.
In the opening clash in Hive Stadium, it was Fetty's captain's Glenn Camel who would open the scoring with a sensational individual effort within 10 minutes. Picking the ball up on the touchline, he showed great strength to outmuscle the opposition, but before embarking on a run from halfway, he converted the try himself to give them a 7 0 lead. Fetes managed to make it 12-0 after 16 minutes when Isaac Buchanan bundled over. Hutchinson spent large spells of the first half in the opposition's 22 and it was only a matter of minutes after Fetty's second try that they managed to get their first points of the game when they scored under the stick through Hainish Cornell to reduce the deficit to five and begin their comeback. And straight from the kickoff, Hutchinson's put Fetty's line under siege, and Ben McCracken scored a converted try to give his side a 14 12 lead into the half time. At the start of the second period, Fetty's started well, but the momentum was curtailed when Captain Glenn Gamble was issued a yellow card. Moments later, after 44 minutes, Hutchinson's increased their lead through Xander Summerhill when they touched down in the corner to make it 19-12. Player of the match, Summerhill, was a threat for Hutchinson's throughout, and he burst down the left wing after 53 minutes to make it 24-12. Hutchinson's began to control the scoreboard and Ben McCracken crossed two minutes later to make it 19-12. Fetis weren't done, however, and they were quick to respond when Lennon Robinson dived over in the corner to make it 29 17. but Hutchinson's regained their composure through, and penalty from Oliver Brown increased their lead. But Fetty's kept fighting, and pegged back a score to make it 32-22 through a Jamie Bruce try. But once again, it was the boot of Oliver Brown that managed to get more points on the scoreboard for Hutchinson's grammar, as that brought the game to a close, and as they won the under-16 school shield. Yeah. 
I think it's a great opportunity for us and the boys just to come out here. We were unlucky to um, get put out of the cup uh, early, but had the opportunity to stay in the shield and come through with the boys and win it. This one. Oh, yeah, it was a tough contest. You know, um, Betty's are really well organised defensively. Um, tested us several times. Um, but yeah, all credit to our boys. They just stuck to the task and, and stuck to their structures. And, and yeah, we got, we got there in the end, so very positive. Congratulations there to Hutchinson's Grammar. We're now going to take a look at the games that took place inside the bowl. First off, it was our under-18 school shield between Dollar Academy and the High School of Dundee. As the match got underway inside the bowl at Scottish Gas Murrayfield, an early penalty at the High School of Glasgow saw David Barry's kick soar through the post and the boys in Navy took an early lead. And Dundee extended their lead at the 10 minute mark after an impressive sprint from Fraser Doig got onto the 5 metre line where he offloaded to winger James Westwood who crashed over the try line. After a slow start, Dollar Academy found their stride as they pushed their way into Dundee's 22. A Dundee fumble presented the opportunity for a penalty kick to touch and skipper Rory Purvis took full advantage as he thundered over the line. A successful conversion by Angus Crockett narrowed the gap on the scoreboard. Dollar got their second try quickly after following a break from the centres, which allowed number 9 Fraser Keach to gather from the back of the ruck and squeeze through the defence. An impressive breakaway from Dollar's fullback Angus Crockett from the half metre line saw him leave all the Dundee players in the dust as he grounded the ball over the line for their third try. Crockett's golden boot proved successful once again as they extended their lead by another three points thanks to this penalty. And it was a case of deja vu for Dollar as Bobby Shearer replicated Crockett's try from earlier as he too sprinted from over the halfway line. Dundee secured a last minute try as the first half came to a close when Ewan Clark thundered towards the line, slipping through the defence in the corner. A short jog from Clark to dot down the ball closer to the post made for an easy conversion as they entered the break as the score was 29 to Dollar and 15 to Dundee. Into the second half and a yellow card was drawn for Dollar's Rory Purvis. However, they were able to stand firm in their defence and didn't let the absence of their captain slow them down. Dollar opened the scoring after a successful offload from Max Gaddy to Kieran Pritchard presented the opportunity for the first try of the second half. Dundee closely followed Dollar's opening try with one of their own as David Barry slipped through the defence and he crashed over the whitewash. Dollar retaliated quickly for their sixth of the match as they execute a flawless play which sent James Richard over the line for the try.
Dundee made one last attempt for the try line in the closing minutes of the game as winger Ewan Clark dashed down the sideline for the final try of the match. In the first thrilling game inside the bowl, it was Dollar Academy that walked away with the under-18 school shield. Yeah, really good, Chuffs. Really proud of all the boys as well. Hard season, we've had a lot of injuries, so... Really proud of everyone to fight back and make it to win the Shields. Absolutely fantastic. Um, it's obviously to come here and get a win. We've we come for quite a few years now and obviously on home uh, with that loss, but today we've got that right, I think. We're now going to take a look at our cup games, which was a huge double header between George Watson's College and Stuart's Melville College. First up, the under-16 teams went to the field for the under-16 Schools Cup. Watsons took the lead in the seventh minute, having had much of the early territory. A tap and goal penalty five metres out was carried in by the forwards, and a phase later Lewis King did just enough to reach the line. But the lead lasted just three minutes as James Derimpa was fastest to react to a loose ball over the line, diving on it to bring his school level. In a tense first half where both teams looked nervous and desperate not to lose, it was Watsons who had hit the front again and just on the brink of half time. An excellent long distance run in from Oliver Bedsford Jones up the right side got him over the line from inside his own half. This brought the score at half time to Stuart's Melville College 7, George Watsons College 12. Four minutes after the interval, Stumel pulled ahead. A driving ball on the left flank slowly manoeuvred towards the line, and it was Ronan Tierney who grounded the ball at the back. Callum Jessup's conversion gave them a two-point lead. But within two minutes, the lead changed hands again. It was a second for the lightning quick Bessford Jones, who motored cleared up the right touch lane once more to put Watson's back in front. After failing in the driving mall the first time, it proved fruitful a second time in the 53rd minute, back on their trusty left. This time it was Robert Ferguson who grounded the ball and Jessup's conversion again gave him a two-point lead. The lead would change hands again with 10 minutes to go, with Watson's forwards putting in the hard graft from a line-out on the right. The ball was kept tight for several phases before Brodie Wright wrestled his way over.
Despite late Stuart's Melville pressure, it was not to be, and George Watson's turned the ball over at the last minute and won a penalty to seal the win. Yeah, it was good. We didn't make it easy for ourselves at times, but you know, it was really enjoyable and really happy to get the win. And this is your first time playing uh, on the international pitch. What was that yes. experience like for you? Yeah, it's a massive pitch, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was really good. Yeah, really fun. And, you and so now we look at the main event, the Under-18 Schools Cup. Joe Anderson reports on another exciting clash between George Watson's College and Stuart's Melville College. George Watson's were first to get on the board when Andrew Cameron successfully slotted his penalty between the sticks just four minutes into the game. The boys in maroon and white were quick to capitalise on their fast start and just five minutes later Fergus Ferguson darted his way down the left wing and across the line. After some time camped in Watson's territory, Stuart's Melville finally bagged their first points of the night in the 19th minute when Daniel Smith darted across the line from close range. But Watson's did not take long to strike back. In the 22nd minute, Daniel Kelly soared up the wing to set up Nico Chapel perfectly to dive across the whitewash. Watson's then added a third score, with number eight Harrison Wood crashing over from a tap and go penalty. Andrew Cameron then added a second penalty of the night, which took us to half time with George Watson's leading 23-7. Ten minutes into the second half and Harrison Wood got his second try of the night. Initially he was just denied after coming off the back of a scrum, but after several phases from the forwards he got the ball back and an excellent step got him over the line from close range. Winger Daniel Kelly then grabbed a fantastic try for Watson's, benefiting from Cameron's chip and chase over the top. Yeah! Stu Mel fought to get themselves back into the game and they managed to do so from the rolling mall, with replacement hooker Connell Burns going over the line. Stumel were determined to show what they were all about and grabbed a third try through Jack Mayer who crossed from short range with just five minutes left on the clock. And as the clock turned red, player of the match Harrison Woods grabbed his hat-trick. 
Watson's got themselves close to the line through the driving wall and Wood showed his strength once again to wrestle over from close range. And with that, George Watson's grabbed their second win over Stuart Melville on an exciting day of rugby at Scottish Gas Murrayfield, winning the Under-18 Schools Cup. A great win for you today, well done. Um, just, just sum up how you're feeling just now. Um... I'm still quite struggling to take it in. I mean, it all happens very quickly when that final whistle blows. But, yeah, I'm, obviously I'm buzzing as well as the rest of the team. Yeah, how much does it mean to that team to, to come here and, and win that trophy? So much. We've been away on tour into South Africa. We started running around a racetrack in May. So to finally win now, it's unbelievable the amount of time and effort that everyone's put into it. Well, congratulations. It's really, a really big win in the end for you guys. Um, just tell me how you feel about the performance. Just really happy for the boys that... Um on a night like tonight, everything that we've practiced and everything that they've done has come together. Um, I can't be prouder and happier for them. They, they put a lot of effort in off the field and a lot of analysis and making sure they're right for games and, and that tonight showed that all that hard work is, is worth it. And so a brilliant double win there for George Watsons as they claim the under-16 and under-18 Schools Cup. So a massive congratulations to them and a massive congratulations to all our winners and the teams participating in today's finals. Don't forget that you can watch the match highlights from the bowl and plate games now on scottishrugby.org and that we have the National Youth Cup finals coming up here at Scottish Gas Murrayfield on the 17th of December. Be sure to look out for them then and thank you very much for watching. Yeah.